Ow! What was this? I say that when I go in the post office all the time. And I see Scott's picture up on the wall. And I say, I know that guy. Dead or alive. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully dead. He's famous in the post office. (coughs) I'm going to go postal. Well, we got enough soda in here, guys. So we got that going for us. We could whack out on sugar. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Dave, what a hell of a game. This game is being played at an incredible pace. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Grab me another one of those Pepsis. <laughs> the hell with the sugar-free. But it's 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> but it's still just it's awesome. Just awesome. Fast. Welcome to Black Beauty Field here on the campus of the University of Evansville in southwestern Indiana as Coventry Healthcare and Aetna Company proudly presents the 2013 Missouri Valley Conference Women's Championship semifinal soccer game number one as the sixth seed Drake Bulldogs get set to take on the second seed Indiana State Sycamores. Hello, everyone, and welcome to MVC Live, along with legendary soccer coach Dave Durr. Great to be back with you, David. I'm Scott Warman. Great to have you alongside. Some people, Dave, would say number six versus a number two. Looks like we could have a lopsided game. Ah, not so fast, my friends, because as Lee Corso would say, this was a two matchup just last week where these two teams saw each other. Very close matchup indeed. It was a close one, Scott. one nothing. Indiana State takes it, but in double overtime to show you how evenly matched these teams are. But if you look at these two teams, I think even though they're evenly matched, the one thing that stands out to me in the season is that only really 17 goals for Drake on 267 shots. So a very high shot total, but not great finishing. On the Indiana State side, you got to look at them and you got to believe the Indiana State has 29 goals and much less shots. So they're a much better finishing team. They attack the goal a little bit better, and that's going to be what you watch for tonight, whether Drake can keep the zero and whether Indiana State can get the goals. Well, let's get to Dave's keys for today's game between these two teams, and it's brought to you by Emerson, the global technology and engineering company. Well, for Indiana State, Scott, I think the Abbey Road, which really means find Abby Reed. She's their leading goal scorer. She's very dangerous going to goals. She plays on the flank, so she'll open them up quite a bit. The first goal is very very important. They're seven and one when they score the first goal, and only one and nine when they don't. That's always important, and they got to get the goal some way. So I'll look for Kate Johnson maybe adding to Reed and opening up the game. On the Drake side, the goalkeeper Andrea Swabson, she needs a big game tonight. I think it's very important since the other team does score so many goals. She gets the shutout, and they've got to take their chances. They got to balance the attack. You got to look for Dusek, Rogers, and Stokes to add something to that attack and make sure they find a way to get a goal tonight. All right, second matchup in his eight days between the Drake Bulldogs and the Indiana State Sycamores. Starting lineups and opening kick from southwestern Indiana when we come back right after this on MVC Live. You want affordable health care coverage that helps cover rising medical costs. And that's exactly what you'll get with Coventry Healthcare. We offer comprehensive, affordable plans for your family or business. Visit CoventryHealthcare.com or text wellness to 74574. Health, wellness, Coventry Healthcare.
Macy's. Famous for pizza. Yeah, I'm married. Doesn't matter. You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis? She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. You like to keep your family healthy and fit. And now there's a new way to do the same for your dog. Introducing new Purina Dog Chow Light and Healthy. It's a no sacrifices, calorie light way to keep him trim. With a deliciously tender and crunchy kibble blend he'll love. And 22% fewer calories than dog chow. Discover the lighter side of strong. New Purina Dog Chow Light and Healthy. You want affordable health care coverage that helps cover rising medical costs. And that's exactly what you'll get with Coventry Healthcare. We offer comprehensive, affordable plans for your family or business. Visit CoventryHealthcare.com or text wellness to 74574. Health, wellness, Coventry Healthcare. Prince Women's Soccer Championship is brought to you by Coventry Healthcare, the official presenting sponsor for Valley Live. And by Casey's General Store, Casey's, famous for pizza. And by Perina Dog Chow, help keeping him strong, Dog Chow Strong. Welcome back to Black Beauty Field here on the campus of the University of Evansville. Our first semifinal matchup between the Drake Bulldogs and the second seed Indiana State Sycamores with Dave Dern, our entire Webstream Productions crew, Scott Warman with you. Great to have you alongside. And while we take a look at our starting lineups, which is a presentation of Pepsi. As we take a look at Drake, the sixth seed, as we look at their uh, components of starting with 4D, three midfielders, and they'll have three forwards starting in this afternoon's contest. Yeah, playing a 4-3-3, and you've got to watch the front three for Drake. They're all very dangerous, pretty even in goals, and the best one really to pay close attention to is number 26, Paige Dusick. Dusick, a senior from Illinois, first uh, leading the team in goals, assists, and points, and they'll be taking on the Indiana State Sycamores, finishing with a record of 9-8, and eight, and a 4-2 and two is uh, their conference record, as you see, Andrea Swanson, 3-11 and 11 with a 142 goals against, and one of the keys, as Dave talked about, for this Drake Bulldog team, if they can pull off the upset here this afternoon. Now, we mentioned Indiana State knocks off Drake in double overtime last week. It was the first victory in three years for the Sycamores over Drake as we take a look at their starting line as they go with a 4-4-2. Yeah, they're really going to come out in a 4-5-1. Even though it's listed as a 4-4-2, you're going to see Reed float out to the left. She does a lot of goal scoring for them. She's been the most dangerous one of late with nine goals on the season. But watch Kate Johnson up top. She tailed off a little bit at the end of the season. She'll play a little bit higher tonight. She's got seven goals on the season, but she needs a big game tonight for Indiana State to be successful. Brittany San Roman is the starting goalkeeper for the Trees. Just a freshman from Illinois. In fact, she was first team all freshman team of the Missouri Valley Conference that was named last night. He had 13 games, 7-6. and six. You see the record, and she had three shutouts in this 2013 campaign for Erica True, the head coach of Indiana State. And there you get a chance to look at our starting lineups brought to you by Pepsi live for and now all right let's get to our series history made possible by coventry healthcare and aetna company drake leads the all-time series as you see there 10 3 and 1 of course indiana state knocking off the bulldogs double ot last week for their first ever victory over drake in des moines and to clinch that second seed with the one nothing victory in two overtimes in des moines And there you see Erica True talking it over with her troops. Erica in her fifth season now at Indiana State. Overall record of 33, 51, and 7. And you see some of the folks from Terre Haute making it down I-41 to take in their women's soccer team semifinal matchup against Drake here this afternoon at Black Beauty Field here in southwestern Indiana. Lindsay Horner is in her sixth season as the head coach of the Drake Bulldogs, 
46, 52, and 19 is the record for Lindsay in her five plus seasons in Des Moines for the Bulldogs. And Drake, the sixth seed, looks like uh, they will get things kick started here. And we are underway. Semifinal matchup number one of our Missouri Valley Conference Women's Soccer Championship from Evansville, Indiana. Well, Drake trying to go right at him from the start. Just a little miss kick there, Scott. But you, it's going to be very interesting to see how Drake starts this game, whether they sit back a little bit or try to go right at Indiana State. And here's Drake with Brittany Schuling. She wears number 16. And Brittany, fourth all-time in assist, leads the team this season in assist for the Bulldogs. Now Armstrong trying to push it forward. Nice defensive play by Indiana State. Indiana State, when you look at their starting lineups, we didn't really get a chance to show you where they're at as far as class is concerned, but a very predominant underclassman team for this Indiana State Sycamore team is it looks like Erica True's really turning around the program in Terre Haute. Bulldogs get it back, trying to forge it ahead. Uh, and a nice play by Indiana State there as Taylor Hancock, the senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, with the steal. Good positive start, though, for Drake Scott. They're coming out trying to find Rebecca Rogers early. You saw a couple early switches of the field there, just trying to find her and get her in behind the defensive line. Rebecca Rogers wears number nine for the team in blue. And here come the Bulldogs once again off the turnover. Trying to get it to Rogers once again, and good coverage by Indiana State, but looks like that one's going to go out of bounds. You can see Rogers really isolated on four defenders, and they're trying to split those two center backs, see if they can't find her in the gaps. Take advantage of her speed. Rodgers, again, just a freshman for the Drake Bulldogs. Led the team in goals and second in the team in points. In fact, most shots by a Drake freshman since 2004 in just her first year in Des Moines for the Bulldogs. And Drake will get into the box for the first time. Rodgers gets it back. Here's an opportunity, shot taken, and a save, and that will go out of bounds, and we'll get a corner, our first of the afternoon for Drake. What a big save there from Brittany San Roman. Just gets to the corner. Take a look at this movement on the goal. Finding some space, a nice pass back, but she does a great job just parrying that wide of the goal. Big time save to start the game. Indiana State starting out a little sloppy. Not able to clear the ball or keep possession right now. This is Brittany Schuling who will handle the corner. And headed out by Indiana State. Sycamores can't get the clear. Now they do all the way near the midfield stripe. And now Drake will take over. Just opening few minutes of this opening half of play of this first semifinal matchup. And really, I think Drake, the... Six seed is kind of Just taken to the Indiana City State early on. Now to the outside is Vaught. Vaught can't catch up with it, and they're going to say Drake will get the throw in here. Hancock did a nice job on that corner, just closing that quickly as there was someone open at the back post, but she gets out there and heads it free, and Indiana State starting a little bit slow here. I think expecting Drake to come a little more defensive, and Drake's putting on the pressure early. Again, just a Double overtime victory at 1-0 for Indiana State in Des Moines last week for the Sycamores, the second seed that wrapped up their number two seed. In fact, for Indiana State, Dave, they haven't lost a game since back in the first of October when they dropped one to the regular season champion Illinois State Redbirds. And they're on a five-game winning streak, and that's probably a little bit why Drake is surprising them here but by coming out so offensive-minded, but it's great to see. Rodgers gets it to the outside. This is Dusek with the cross. Oh, the header just past Kayla Armstrong. And catching up to it is Vaughn for Indiana State. What a great ball in. Kayla Armstrong just can't quite get to that, but fantastic ball in from Paige Dusek. A 
couple of early opportunities here for Drake in the opening five minutes of our opening half. Sycamores can't get the clear. Here's Rogers once again. Rogers, the freshman, goes to the outside. Dusick in the box and headed out. Indiana State trying to look for a counterattack here, but Drake continues with the pressure on the offensive end. Well, you're just seeing Drake win every second ball here. Every ball that's cleared, they're having trouble getting out of their own zone, let alone maintaining possession. Really good job by Drake jumping on the second balls, and Indiana State just can't clear it. And again, the Bulldogs work in the center of the field. And trying to control there was Sidney Losey. Now Drake handles it again. Chips it forward. Stokes can't get it up ahead to Rogers. And now it's carried by Indiana State. Good read from Alexander Rodas. Just cutting off the passing lane yeah. there. But once again, under a lot of pressure, Indiana State. They've got to get some sustained possession here, Scott. And just kind of keep the ball because Drake is doing a very good job of just getting their lines high and not letting them out of their own end. Now the Drake Bulldogs advanced to the semifinals with their quarterfinal victory over Loyola, the newest member of the Missouri Valley Conference. They had to go to PK's long match in their quarterfinal matchup, but they wound up winning it to advance to the semis for the first time for the Drake Bulldogs since 2009. Well, they've come in tonight very well organized. You can see that they understand what they need to do against this Indiana State team. Sycamores. Now Rogers gets it back. Now Dusick. Dusick with the cross and goes just over the head of Rogers. There's Armstrong trying to get in the middle and the clear made by Indiana State. Another good ball from Dusick there, Scotch. He just laid into the back post. Someone needed to get on the end of that. Just hung up there. And now Indiana State trying to get settled down, try to get a counterattack, and Drake will get another throw in. Great pressure by the sixth seed in the opening minutes of this semifinal matchup. Yeah, we've been talking just for a few minutes. You can see they haven't gotten really in the other half of the field so far. I would even say 30 seconds, to be honest with you, Dave, and we're going to get a goalie kick here for Indiana State. No score opening eight minutes of this one from Black Beauty Field on the campus of the University of Evansville. Our first semifinal matchup here on MVC Live between second seed Indiana State, six seed Drake coming up a little bit later on just after six o'clock. We'll kick it off in our second semifinal as the host, the Evansville Purple Aces, the fifth seed will take on the regular season champions, the Illinois State Redbirds who wound up being undefeated. Now, here comes the Sycamores with their first chance. Indiana State with the drive right on. Good shot taken by Kate Johnson, but the save made by Andrea Swanson. A good quick counter there, and they did a much better job of switching the field. When a team tries to press you and close you in on one half the field like that, they switched it out, made a good run, and counterattacked down the far side. Good run from Kate Johnson, testing the keeper early. Bulldogs go back for it, and they'll collect it. Try to get that attack going once again. But Indiana State trying to maintain some pressure for the first time in the opening stages of this opening half of play. And that one's going to be headed out, and Drake will get the throw in here at the 36-minute mark left of our opening half of play. You can see why Drake has got a lot of shots on this season, had a lot of chances, but hasn't quite been able to get on the end of them so far, and that's a little bit indicative of their season so far. Sycamores <clears throat> getting that settled, trying to get to the outside. Nice play there, trying to get it to Abby Reed, one of the other top freshmen in the Missouri Valley Conference who led the Sycamores in scoring in just her first year in Terre Haute. And back and forth we go here. 
and in the middle part of the field. Now here come the Bulldogs on the attack once again. Pritchard trying to get it ahead to Rogers. Rogers trying to find off a defender and good defensive play there by Rodas. But here comes the Bulldogs back. They're in the box. Bulldogs with a nice carry and a nice defensive play by Indiana State. And they'll get the clear all the way down to the other end. We have an inju injured Indiana State Sycamore right in front of the Illinois State, or excuse me, the Indiana State box. And Tory Flynn coming up a little bit lame as well. Yeah. She's hanging way back by the box right now. I'm not sure the referee has seen her. She made a great recovery after being beat. Makes a desperate tackle, and she just took a knock, it looks like. This is look at the play after. She gets hit late, just right in the stomach. Referee let that one play on. Looked like a little bit of a foul there, but... Referee playing the advantage, even though it was a little bit late on the Drake player. Matt McIntyre is our referee for today's matchup. And Sycamores will get the throw in. Trying to chip it ahead on the far side, and now Drake will get control here. No score. Opening 10 minutes of this one from Black Beauty Field in Evansville. You see Indiana State much more comfortable on the counter. Every time that they've had a chance where Drake's been pushing forward, they've done a much better job of breaking it down. In possession, they've struggled a little bit as Drake has done a good job playing the passing lanes tonight. And Hoover, you see there on the near sidelines, number 18 with the throw in for the Bulldogs. That's Dusick, leading scorer for this Drake team. And now Indiana State back the other way. It's not often you have a winger be your leading scorer, and you can see right away that Dusick, very dangerous on the outside, not only getting crosses in, but coming in at that back post. Maddie Orff, the freshman from St. Charles for Indiana State. Third in the team in goals and also a part of the all-freshman team for the Sycamores. Misplay there, and Drake will get it off the turnover by the Sycamores. And now Indiana State will collect it back. Nice pressure that time from Molly McKee. Just stepped up at the right time and stopped that counterattack. Molly McKee, a sophomore from... Terre Haute plays right in her own backyard in her collegiate soccer days. Just her second season under Erica True. And we'll get a throw in here by the Drake Bulldogs once again. And trying to work that near sideline. And not enough room there. So Drake trying to get it over. But uh, we'll get the throw in for Indiana State. Yeah, Rian Pritchard did a nice job just turning out of pressure, but looking for a run on the wing. Wow. How about Abby Reed working the line there? Now with the carry, and she's taken off the play. And now she'll get possession back. Gets the cross, headed out. Now Taylor Reed, the sister, her shot's blocked. And here comes Drake back the other way. Uh, just show you, shows you good things happen when you get those early crosses in. Not a great clearance, but Indiana State almost pounced on that second ball. Now Reed is going to be whistled for an offside. Abby Reed. Most goals in a season for a freshman, at least tying two other Sycamores. Also leads the team in points. And made not only first team all freshman team, but Abby Reed with her performance this season also made first team all Missouri Valley Conference. She's had a fantastic season. You can see she has great pace, plays the whiff very well where she can get a little more space. Good crosser of the ball, but not afraid to take people on 1v1.
Good pressure from Kate Johnson, just fighting up there, making it difficult on the defense to clear the ball. McKee will get the throw in. She'll get it to Johnson. And nice defensive play there by the Drake Bulldogs. And it's like that was number 18. Ann Hoover, the senior from Nevada, Iowa. And here on the near sideline, kind of our blind spot here from a broadcast position, it is a throw in for Indiana State. Johnson back to McKee, stolen. Nice defensive play there by the Drake Bulldogs. Really a good job by Kate Johnson holding the ball, Scott, but no one really moving off of her quickly. And Drake making it difficult to find the runners off the ball. They get a shot of Paige Dusek, number 26. Again, the senior for this Drake Bulldog team. Sycamores with the possession. Trying to reverse the field here. Scoreless first half up to this point. Now trying to get to the outside and the cross. And right there is Andrea Swanson for the save for the Bulldogs. Well, Taylor Hannock, another nice play. What a great turn out of the midfield. She really just exposed Drake defensively and plays a nice ball down the wing. No one cutting to the near post, but good build up that time from Indiana State. And here's Hancock here. Hancock with the carry right at the midfield area and trying to punch it outside. This is Vaught, number 27. And now Indiana State can't get control and Drake will try to get a counter attack here. It's been the first 10 minutes was predominantly Drake putting the pressure on Indiana State but things definitely leveling out here in the last few minutes Dave. Here's Vaught. Vaught drives it and too high and we'll get a goal Stop kick for, for the Drake Bulldogs at the 28-40 mark of this first half. Well you can see Indiana State has just settled a little bit. It's a good Shout, Scott, that they're starting to put a lot more pressure on you, getting great runs from Natalie Vaught on the outside, just trying to spring herself in behind the defense once the ball turns over. A real nice play that time by Megan Fisher to break up that pass as Vaught was in free one-on-one -on, -one on the keeper. Swanson drives this one near the midfield mark of this Black Beauty field now. Drake is going up against the wind here in the opening half. Now Reed on the outside. Abby Reed, the freshman. Abby dropping it off to her sister Taylor. Now one touch ahead and a drive and a save John made Green, by Indiana Swanson. State, That's much Taylor better from Indiana State, Drake. though. Great Number one, two, two gets down the line. Boston. Good service from Reed and just can't get enough power on the shot, but... Good build up there from Indiana State. And number 15, that's Taylor Reed. That's Abby's older sister, who is the senior on this squad. And she has definitely made a mark in Indiana State women's soccer in her last four years in Terre Haute. That's pretty nice when you got a sister coming every four years. Yeah. And good for the recruiting efforts. I'm sure. <laughs> Coach True's happy about that. Armstrong on the outside for Drake. She's probably sending the parents some gift baskets. I think so. Keep them coming. <laughs> we'll get Drake with the throw in here. Under 27 minutes left in our opening half of play. Nice little handy pass right there. Then stolen by the Sycamores. And Kate Johnson trying to give chase, but they'll tap it back to Swanson. Yeah, a little dangerous. Drake just leaving Kate Johnson 1v1 at the back, but she's not really the kind of player that's going to break in behind you. More someone who's very physically strong, holds the ball well for Indiana State. That was Taylor Reed on the outside. I think that's 1v1 with the keeper. Now the Sycamores. That's Rogers. Didn't get enough mustard on that pass there. Indiana State reclaims possession. The game getting stretched out just a little bit more now. You can see the lines on the Drake team are not as well connected, and that's allowing some open spaces for Indiana State to break them down now. 
That's going to really play to their advantage if this game opens up. Here come the Bulldogs on the attack. Stolen there by Indiana State. Sycamores really have kind of controlled the play here in the last 10 minutes after struggling in the opening 10 yeah, minutes. No David. question. I mean, Drake had a fantastic stop, but the game's just switched momentum here. You haven't seen a lot of touches by Ashley Stokes or Rebecca Rogers after the beginning of the game, and they were really cutting in between the Indiana State lines early on. They really went on the attack from the opening kick of this matchup, but Indiana State slowly but surely has kind of taken things over in the last 10 minutes of play. Drake trying to apply some pressure. Good defense by Indiana State. And go back to the backfield for the Drake Bulldogs. And a nice job there by Rodas to get that 50-50 ball. They're really doing a good job now of just kind of keeping the lines a little bit closer. Indiana State and making sure there's not big gaps between the midfield and the back four and, and staying connected. So they're doing a much better job winning the ball now. They've just got to take a little bit better care of the ball once they win it. Bulldogs on the attack. Here's Dusick. She's on side. Dusick with the cross and the high shot is handled by Rit Brittany San Roman, the all freshman goalkeeper for the Indiana State Sycamores. Well, you can tell Dusick is used to playing that ball to the back post. That's the third one Scotchy's played back there, and no one's been coming in on the weak side to get on the end of that. If I'm Kayla Armstrong, I'm thinking, boy, the next time she gets wide, I'm getting to that back post because she sent the last three there. Now the Sycamores with their own attack. Here's Reed. Reed in the open. Couldn't settle that ball, and we'll get a throw in for Indiana State. Well, good timed run. She split the defenders there nicely. And she really, I thought, had a chance to keep going instead of taking the early shot. She has great pace. She might have been able to get behind the defender. A little rushed on that one. Trying to get it inside to Reed. And Drake will get the clear. Back to Indiana State. This is McKee. McKee's pass is intercepted. And now Drake will throw it in here on the near sideline. With just over 23 minutes left in our first semifinal, the Missouri Valley Conference Women's Soccer Championship from Black Beauty Field here on the campus of University of Evansville. No score between the Drake Bulldogs, the sixth seed, and the second seed, Indiana State Sycamores. Coming up just after 6 o'clock, we'll kick it off in our second semi. The regular season champ, Illinois State Redbirds, taking on Evansville with that shot going high and wide for the Drake Bulldogs. Well, we talked about Kayla Armstrong coming inside a little bit and looking for that shot on the weak side. This one's on a bad turnover, but she gets a good shot. She get a look at Kate Johnson. Kate Johnson is our MVC Scholar Athlete of the Match. Dave Durr, the Indiana State's Kate Johnson, sophomore midfielder from Valparaiso, Indiana. Johnson has seven goals, four assists for a total of 18 points this year. Johnson, as you saw, had a 3.8 Hume GPA in communications, has three game-winning goals for the trees this season. Kate Johnson, our scholar athlete of the match. All right, Dusick trying to give chase here, and a nice defensive play by Hoover. And that one's going to go out of bounds. Check it. It's Shelby Troyer. I apologize. Shelby Troyer with a nice defensive play by Indiana State. Now Sycamores get it to Johnson. Johnson. We'll get it to the outside to McKee. Nice job Double by Johnson. Double coverage contact, and we're going to get a foul call. No card on Drake. What a nice job by Johnson there, Scott. Just holding the ball and allowing McKee the time to make the run and creates the foul there. She can look. She makes a good overlapping run there and player really just trying to get her body in front and then pulls her over after the tug. Good call from the referee. Maddie Orff, another fantastic freshman for this. 
Indiana State squad will drive it into the box, headed out. It was Reed wide open, trying to tap it forward. Shot and a goal. Indiana State scores first. I think the referee's no, going to call gonna offside. offside there, no, Scott. Is... I apologize. I thought it went in the back of the net. It just went wide. I think he Indiana called offside on the plays. He had his flag up very early in the play when it was flicked on. And if you can see the linesman at the top of your screen, offside. his flag goes up right Indiana there. State. He called offside before wow. it was ever a goal. I'm not sure if it went in or not. Because Boy, she had a wide open net. I thought that was just money in the bank. But the offsides call, and so Drake will get possession. And that will go out off of Drake. Indiana State will get the throw in here from McKee. Boy, she had nothing but net right there, Dave. Yeah, and she actually a nice design play. Just a little yeah, eager to get in behind Allie when the ball was flicked on. Or you'd probably have the first goal of the game. Allie R.D., as you see there, she checks in for Molly McKee in that back line, that back set that Indiana State runs of four defenders. And as Dave pointed out in the outset, they run a 4-5-1 for the Indiana State Sycamores this season. The back four gets a little spread out here the last couple minutes. And the cross and Indiana State in the box trying to get it to a center. And now it's cleared out by Drake. And the pressure is applied again, but Andrea Swanson, the Fantastic junior goalkeeper for the Bulldogs handles it there. I was just about to say Indiana State just getting a little spread out in the back four. One player not keeping a tight line, getting a little deep. But, of course, when you're attacking at the other end, that's not <laughs> totally critical. No. Another thing we've noticed after the first 10 minutes, Dave, is the fact that really Indiana State doing a much better job of the 50-50 balls after the first 10 minutes where it was all Evans. Yeah, I think that really Drake started out and they just had a lot of energy. You could see they came out with great intensity and that's the way you want to start a match. And it took Indiana State a little bit by surprise and a little while to get into that flow, but they've been much better, as you said, on second balls now, especially. Not always that first ball that goes forward, but who's the quickest to, to get the second touch? Drake on the carry and a nice defensive play by Indiana State, but they're offsides once again Indiana as Abby State. Reed was a little bit ahead of the defenders for the Bulldogs. Well, good forwards to always cut that tight line, try to get right on the edge of offside and onside in between the defense. Abby Reed just getting caught a little bit offside there, trying to anticipate that through ball. Megan Fisher, the senior from Ickney, Iowa, will drive this one into Indiana State territory. Bulldogs trying to put some pressure on the freshman goalkeeper for Indiana State, and they haven't been able to do so in quite a period of time here after coming out, as Dave alluded to, in the opening 10 minutes with a vengeance against the number two seed. But here comes the Sycamores trying to get an attack going once again. This is Vaught. Vaught with the carry. Vaught up ahead. Reed. And Swanson will hustle out and handle it there. There you get a shot of Abby Reed again, the freshman. All freshman team, all Missouri Valley Conference team, as was announced last night by the Missouri Valley Conference. We have a whistle here. And Drake will get a free kick. Looks like we might have had a handball here, Dave. Yeah, she got caught just knocking her in the back a tiny bit. Referee caught it early. Good call from the referee. Just, to, just really forced her to lose possession. Not a lot of contact, but really what caused her to lose the touch on the ball. This is Brittany Schuling. And trying to head it forward. There's Rogers. We haven't called her name in quite a bit. Rogers settles it. Rogers triple teamed, and Indiana State will clear out the pressure. Well, you can see Rogers left alone a lot. 
just to kind of fend for herself against four defenders and when they get extra attackers in they're really coming from wide positions so she's got her hands full tonight here is Abby Reed on the attack trying to get it back to Kate Johnson now to Taylor Reed Taylor Taylor drive shot goal Taylor Reed rips one from the top and gives the Sycamores the oh, one nothing lead well that's what you do Taylor with the sister Reed. combination great work from Abby Reed again exposing them on the wing she's been getting in fairly consistently in the last 20 minutes and dropped quite a few crosses back this time Taylor Reed reading it well coming in from behind take a look at how she supports here once again Abby Reed exposing them on the flank gets her head up nicely finds the runner drops it back not cleared perfectly comes off a deflection really but Taylor Reed in the right spot supporting the play and finishes it nicely. Nothing the keeper can do there as it comes through a crowd. You got plenty of defenders there, but when you have a defender kind of screening you that deep back, it's very difficult for the goalkeeper to see that shot till it gets past that last defender. Taylor Reed picking up her third goal of the season for the Sycamores, and the Sycamores have the early 1-0 lead here as we have just over 15 minutes left in the opening half of play. And again, remember, these two teams hooked up just eight days ago, and it was a 1-0 win for the Sycamores, but they had to go to double overtime before they came away with the victory. So a regulation goal for the Sycamores or either one of these two teams, which we didn't see just over a week ago. I think you're going to see the game really open up now, Scott. You can already see both teams getting really stretched. The, the connection between the back line and the forwards is a good 60, 70 yards in the field between both teams. Here comes Abby Reed again on the attack. Left foot shot, goal! Abby Reed finds the weak side. Picks up the goal, and now Whoa. the Sycamores are rolling to a 2 nothing lead with 14.38 left in our opening half. That's Reed's tenth goal of the season. Boy, what an effort for the freshman for Indiana State. Great play here. Well, this is a fantastic run from Abby Reed. Ball picked off a quick turnover, and you can see how quick they expose them defensively. Great run in between the backs, and it almost looks like she's trying to slot it and miss hits it to the far post, but I'm sure she'll tell me after the game she was aiming there. That was perfect because you saw a great run there in the middle. Sydney Losing had come in, kind of distracted the defender, and she was trailing on that play. She was ready for a potential rebound. In case Swanson might have gotten a touch on it, but just a beautiful shot by the freshman she put it right in the side netting so whether on purpose or lucky it still counts <laughs> that's right two nothing indiana state and that's really got to take the wind out of the sails of the Drake bulldogs again really controlling things in the opening stages and really kind of fending off that pressure by the sycamores but once the ball is rolling as you know dave it can really just swarm and We'll see if Indiana State can continue this pressure on the 6 seed Bulldogs. Now what you notice uh, really early on from Abby Reed that's very special is when she plays the ball, she moves very well off the ball. She's always looking for the give and go. And you don't see that often. You have to, a lot of players will watch after they release the ball and not make that hard run. She's done it four or five times in this game, and every time she's done it, she's gotten in behind. And you got to credit her on the last one. That's really what happened. Is as soon as the ball was won, boom, boom, she looked in to get in and split those two defenders. So she's very quick off the ball and really a very nice run. That is the 10th goal this year for the freshman, which is now a school record. 10 goals in one season for an Indiana State Sycamores. 2 nothing Trees as the second seed has the first half lead here in Evansville. This is a little bit more how you expected the game to start out, Scott. Exactly. Sycamore's on the cross. Johnson's right there doing battle. Drake trying to get the clear, and they'll get it ahead to Armstrong. And again, Indiana State doing a better job of getting to those 50-50 balls. There's Taylor Reed right there. They'll run it to the outside. 
Sycamores can't get the handle, the whistle, and Drake will get it here. And here come the Bulldogs trying to make get some pressure. Down by two goals here. And good defense again right there, Dave, by Indiana State. Yeah, they're not allowing them to get that quick release. Early on, they were just allowing them a little bit of time and sitting back and just trying to read the ball. Now they're getting quicker pressure, not allowing them to turn and find that early ball over the top to Rebecca Rogers. Substitution. Get a substitution Indiana for State. Indiana State, as you see Number Bria Caldwell, the junior Caldwell. from the state of Washington, will come in for Kate Johnson. I've been watching Bria Caldwell for three years. She's got a lot of power, a lot of pace. She's kind of their super sub, comes in and adds a lot of energy. If you're losing two nothing, this is a, a great weapon to have <laughs> coming off the bench. And you got to be thinking those Drake defenders are thinking, oh, I got to deal with this now. Well, I think it's one of those things that we talked about. A very young team, but it looks like Erica True is really establishing a deep, strong team in Terre Haute. As Swanson will handle the kick there. 11 30 left here in the opening half as second seed Indiana State up 2 0 over six seed Drake. That header off of Reed. And we'll see if Drake can kind of get something set up and carry a little bit of momentum. They've lost it for a good portion here of this first half. Uh, they always say this is the most dangerous time in soccer. Armstrong is tackled, and we do get a whistle. And so we get a kick here from the Drake Bulldogs. You know, if you're that team down 2-0, you get that one goal, you can make the momentum completely shift, and the other team get a little bit on their heels. Of course, if they score the next one, it can make you feel it's out of reach. See who gets the kick here for the Bulldogs as you see the Sycamores setting up the wall. And a drive blocked by Pritchard on that shot by number nine. Number nine Rebecca now they try to get it ahead and Indiana State will just clear it out. Interesting uh, set piece. They set up a lot of players at the back post looking like they might try to cross the ball and laid it off for the quick kick. Just a little bit slow developing, but that's very difficult to do to lay that trip off that tight to goal. That might have been a, a little better if it was 10 or 15 yards out farther. There's Pritchard getting it to the outside to Dusick. Dusick back to Pritchard. And now Indiana State will get out to midfield. Caldwell couldn't get the handle. Mm. And a nice play by Pritchard here to try to steal it away. She does briefly. And now the 50-50 ball to the Sycamores. And we get a whistle on Drake. So it'll be Indiana State's kick. Under 10 minutes left here in the opening half. Yeah, just a late challenge there. Kayla Armstrong coming in after the ball was headed away. Going for the ball, but just a tiny bit late. Good call from the referee. This is Shelby Troyer. She's a senior from Ohio, and she's... Part of the all Missouri Valley Conference team as a defender in the Valley in their final season in Terre Haute. Their team up to nothing. Rodas trying to get it to the outside. And now I'll drive it into the Drake zone. And that is going to be off Indiana State's Sydney Losey. So we get the throw in for Drake. <laughs> and the Bulldogs now trying to get set something set up here and try to get some pressure, get some momentum before the end of this first half of play down by two goals. Well, they're starting to get locked in on one side. They got to find a way to spread Indiana State out a little bit more to spread the field, not allow them to get that immediate pressure they've been getting in the last 20 minutes and just try to change the field a little bit quicker. Teams that pressure you, you can get them on one side of the field and you can change the field quickly you can open them up a little bit. Kylie Sumner will check in as Abby Reed, who has one of the two goals, the 
fantastic freshman for the Sycamores. We'll get a breather. Now this is Caldwell with the cross, and oh, Indiana State came oh so close to making it 3 now. What a nice turn from Bria Caldwell. You see a little bit of what Kay Johnson was adding earlier, and Bria Caldwell comes in and doesn't drop at all. Just gets a good cross in, nice hard run to that back post again. Shot for Indiana Sydney Losing has got to feel like she's a little bit unlucky. She made two very good runs to draw the defender coming across the near post. And I love that when a player tries to get across that back. A good ball in. She just well defended that time. Swanson with the kick. And Caldwell giving chase. And now Swanson will drive it. Into the parking lot. It didn't hit your car, did it, now, Dave? <laughs> there you see Andre Swanson, the junior from Clive, Iowa. 142, the goals against 766, the save percentage this year for Lindsey Horner's Drake Bulldogs. On the attack again, Caldwell with the cross. And Swanson's going to have to come up and play it herself. We got a good look at Bria Caldwell once again. Just a fantastic turn. She feels the pressure from the defender and just turns out of it wherever the defender's leaning. She spins the other way. That's the second one in a row where she's really made a nice turn and freed herself up with a good cross. Not quite un able to get on the end of them, but if she keeps doing that, you're going to feel another goal for Indiana State. And there's a shot of Bria Caldwell right there. Just under six minutes left in this opening half. Two goals by the Sycamores have given them that two nothing lead here in the opening half of our first semifinal. And a whistle is going to be on Drake. It looks like this time, Dave. Yeah, a tough touch from Alex Wayne. She's got <coughs> caught there just with a bad touch. And referee's going to give her a yellow because he saw the shirt pull. He just got a little bit of her shirt and pulled it out there, and an easy call from the referee. Quick look at the two goals. The first one set up here, Taylor Reed, with the drive. She does a fantastic job, really, there, Scott, of just baiting the defenders, getting to bite on the first fake. And then here, I'm going to say that she did that on purpose, and she'll probably uh, hate me for saying that she might have been an accident, but I just saw the run centrally. It looked like she got her head up and saw her, but hit a perfect shot on the far post. So as many goals as she scored, we got to give her the benefit of the doubt. Our goal summary brought to you by Casey's General Store. Casey's famous for pizza. So the Reed sisters, Taylor first, and then the little baby sister, who is just putting up some goals and points this year for the Indiana State Sycamores makes it 2-0, and that's where we stand with just over five minutes left in our first half of play. Rodgers couldn't get the handle there for the Drake Bulldogs. She's been very quiet after a very <coughs> busy opening 10 minutes and gets the steal there. Well, she's been stuck a lot more on her own than the start of the game. They were getting a lot of numbers and attack and support, and now she's just been kind of isolated. Very difficult to be a player one versus four and get much success. And you got you got to speak a little bit about the play of Taylor Hancock. She's really bowling up the middle on those second balls. Maggie Richard has come in there as well and done the same thing Hancock was doing. So this has been a nice job defensively to settle a little bit from Indiana State. Bulldogs inside the box and Brittany San Roman handles it and she picks up another save. Well, good numbers that time from Drake and Brittany San Roman made that look easy, but that was a difficult save. Just popped in a 50-50 ball between her and the attacker and she read it well and just got there early. Caldwell on a double team. Nice carry. Trying to get it outside. Sycamores are onside. Here they are on the attack once again. This is L. Steele. And we'll get a corner. Our first of the match for Indiana State. Does he get a shot of L. Steele, the sophomore from Indianapolis? Thought she could have kind of took that first time and been in behind the defense. She 
settled that and brought it back and allowed the defender to recover. Taylor Reed handles the corner here for the Sycamores. Up 2-0. Reed, header out, kept in, and Swanson can't get the handle. Still up for grabs, and Swanson finally comes down with it. Boy, that was dangerous for Drake. For Swanson did a nice job of just Alexander staying with that. He actually came out a tiny bit late, but she stays with the play. Good numbers here, and kind of walling her off. She can't get the ball. She comes out. She doesn't quite get there and takes out her own player, but she stays with it. Good composure. Tell you how many players would panic a little bit in that situation. Kylie Sumner, number 13. And we'll get a Drake throw in here and also a substitution for the Bulldogs. As we'll see, Kayla Armstrong taking a seat and coming in to replace her, number 20, Charlie Maxwell, senior from Noblesville, Indiana. Well, right there, and now Indiana State back with it. Caldwell, one on three. Caldwell trying to get some help. Bria taking her time, and we get the whistle and a kick here for Indiana State. With just over a minute and a half left here in the opening half, the Reed sisters with the two goals. Sycamore is up two nothing for the second seed here in our first semifinal matchup. So important, Scott, just to have that player that can hold up the ball for you. Both Kate Johnson and Bria Caldwell to have two is unusual. All right, here comes Drake on the attack, on a breakaway shot, saved by San Roman. Boy, Brittany coming up huge there as a breakaway Drake, for three, Drake's Emma Winstead. And boy, I'll tell you what. For a freshman, she was very composed on this break. Well, Winstead gets in behind the defense, a bad defensive mistake, but she times her run perfectly and just gets out there, makes her body big. This makes it difficult to get by. A little bit fortunate it didn't get underneath her, but that's a great goalkeeping coming off your line, timing her run, making her body big, and just making it difficult for the forward, putting the pressure on them to put it by you. That's a big save. I'm telling you, that 2-1 lead just changes the entire game. Start putting nerves into the picture of, of Indiana State. And so we're winding down this opening half of play here from Black Beauty Field in Evansville. 2-0. Second yeah. seed, Indiana State Nine, with eight, the lead. Seven, six, five, and the countdown four, on rolls three, on. Swanson with two, the save. One. And that'll do it. 45 minutes in the books here at Black Beauty Field. The Reed sisters, Taylor first, Abby second goal. And the Sycamores lead it 2-0 after the first half the of play. Well, good first half for Indiana State. Really a slow start, a little surprising. I think they're going to feel good to go in with a 2-0 lead. Could have easily been a different score. A lot of chances for Drake Williams in that late chance. So if you're Drake, you got to build on that. Go into half and see if you can't build from that last chance getting in behind the Indiana State defense. Stick around. Halftime show is headed your way next here from Evans. Comcast Sportsnet Chicago and ESPN3. program sees more than 6,000 kids with heart problems each year. 
We treat them in St. Louis's only state-of-the-art suite that allows us to diagnose and operate in one place. And we have the region's top two pediatric heart surgeons. Each day, our heart team comes together to heal kids, one heart at a time. Having the best, another way our love for kids just keeps on growing. kind of food waste into an unending source of electrical power for a city? When Emerson takes up the challenge, it's never been done before, simply becomes consider it solved. Emerson. In the insurance business, you think differently about a customer when you stand in the middle of his dreams. When she serves you breakfast every Saturday morning. When his son plays on the same team as your son. When you live down the street from your customers, you make sure they get covered right, and you make sure you're there when they need you. That's the way it's done around here. Grinnell Mutual, a policy of working together. To find a Grinnell Mutual agent near you, go to GrinnellMutual.com. Here in Evansville, Indiana, as it's the 2013 Missouri Valley Conference Women's Soccer Championship semi-final Friday and halftime of our first semi-final as the second seed Indiana State Sycamores leading the sixth seed Drake Bulldogs by a score of two to nothing and it's time for our coaches chat which is brought to you by the St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau kind enough to join us is the regular season championship coach also his coaching staff is the coaching staff of the year the Missouri Valley Conference good to see Drew Roth join us here good to see you man congratulations uh, six and zero this season. Uh, what a season uh, your your squad has had this year, Drew. Yeah, we uh, really challenged ourselves in the pre conference schedule and uh, had some tough results and some good results and uh, learned a lot. And I think we we're ready to go for conference play and uh, really uh, you know playing our best soccer here towards the end of the season. Yeah, you played a lot of Big Ten teams. You played some Big East uh, squads. Really yeah. prepared you for the season, then, huh? It did. It did. We had to battle every single minute, and I think that helped uh, with our consistency issues that we've had in the past. We were forced to play the full 90 minutes, and uh, it was tough, but I think it, it got us ready. Drew, talk a little bit about the confidence of your team. When you play that kind of schedule early, and then you got to get the team ready for the other games. How did you respond to that? How did you get the team turned around? I think it helped because, uh, you know, there's no environment that we could go into and be intimidated or no level that, you know, we haven't seen. And uh, we played teams that really uh, punished us for our mistakes early, which is hard at the time, but it also really forces you to, uh, you know, learn not to concede goals and, uh, you know, figure out where your weaknesses are. So it, it really paid off. And I think uh, the key is we had good leadership that never got too down and said, hey, let's, let's keep working, even though we uh, – are struggling at times and not getting the results, uh, it's a long season. And uh, I like the mentality and the consistency that these girls have shown. Well, you get a big win against a nationally ranked team later in the season, and obviously that builds your confidence. Talk a little bit about the players' attitude. You know, what's changed for this year? Who are the players to watch on that team? Well, I think, the, like I said, the, the consistency has been very impressive. You know, I think this team uh, has had very few days in training or games where I've been disappointed with the effort. I think that, uh, you know, in the past we've always had very good teams, but sometimes we'd be, you know, play to the competition, play up, play down all over the place and not know what to expect. I feel like this team, every you know, really enjoys playing the game, and uh, every day they show up we, we kind of get a good effort and a, a good consistent level. So uh, I think, you know, obviously Tejada, everything starts with her up top, uh, you know, all-time leader in the Valley for points uh, as a junior. Uh, so... She's very special. And then uh, we have a young freshman, Hannah Liner, and then Kyla Cross, who are two players that played next to her. And uh, they're very dynamic attacking players. So it's, uh, you know, it's been a, a nice, uh, you know, combination of those those three up top. And then uh, we've done well uh, not giving up goals. And it was really great to see our uh, goalkeeper, Aaron Newsom, get some recognition because sometimes, uh, you know, we're known for scoring some goals and maybe not preventing them. So uh, <laughs> They're always forgetting about the yeah, goalies, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> you know, and because uh, she's not tested as much, but she makes the big saves when she needs to, and she plays with her feet really well. So uh, it's just been a good good combination top to bottom, uh, you know, front line to back line. Everybody's just consistently gotten a little better as we've gone along. You know, Drew, it's interesting because I was just met with your uh, athletic director, uh, Larry Lyons, mm -hmm. last month, and we were talking about actually Rachel, Rachel Tejada, and what yeah. just an amazing athlete the young lady is. And 
You have to remember, only a junior has got another year, which I know you're yeah. happy about. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we'd like to give her a fifth and sixth year if we could. You know. We're going to get uh, some offspring, yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, she comes from a big soccer family, unfortunately. Uh, there's no uh, females coming up in the no. ranks. But, uh, <laughs> but no, she, uh, you know, what's great about her is she's so talented, but she's also a very smart player, and she just loves to play soccer, and that's one of the reasons why she's so good. But uh, that really kind of, you know, you can see that throughout our team. When you show up for training and you got your team leader, uh, you know, loving playing and getting after it, uh, just kind of sets a tone. You mentioned Liner, and I mean, you've got a young squad, mm -hmm. and you mentioned Liner and a couple other terrific freshmen that you got going yeah. this year. Yeah, Hannah Liner, and, uh, another freshman, uh, Dagny Olson in the midfield has been really good, and uh, two freshmen in the back that have stepped up and very solid. So uh, the future is bright. You know, we, we're going to miss our three seniors this year. have done a tremendous job, all three starters. Uh, but I think they've kind of prepared the rest of the group to be very successful down the road. Well, good luck uh, this evening, and congratulations right. on, again, another successful season. Bob. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate that it. That is uh, Drew Roth. He is the head coach at Illinois State, the top seed here in the Women's Championship this weekend, and our coaches' chat is brought to you by the St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. 2-0 the score as the second seed Sycamore is lead it. Stick around. More of our halftime show coming your way right after this. You want affordable health care coverage that helps cover rising medical costs, and that's exactly what you'll get with Coventry Healthcare. We offer comprehensive, affordable plans for your family or business. Visit CoventryHealthcare.com or text Wellness to 74574. Health, Wellness, Coventry Healthcare. You could fly to Venice or Paris or even Copenhagen. You could fly all over the world. But why? When you could just come to St. Louis. Your trip begins at explorestlouis.com. chat check in new foods new fun new favorites all right new client don't stop there explore discover connect grow celebrate work live play Three. at hilton garden inn we know you'll love our cook to order breakfast first rate service and award-winning amenities so count on us to give you all the ways to make the most of every stay hilton garden inn evansville the official hotel partner of the missouri valley conference you want affordable health care coverage that helps cover rising medical costs, and that's exactly what you'll get with Coventry Healthcare. We offer comprehensive, affordable plans for your family or business. Visit CoventryHealthcare.com or text Wellness to 74574. Health, Wellness, Coventry Healthcare. Back at Black Beauty Field here on the campus of the University of Evansville, as you see the score at the half of our first semifinal matchup, the second seed Sycamores lead the six seed Bulldogs by a score of two. To nothing. And welcome back in the booth. And the head coach of the fifth seed Evansville Purple Aces is Krista McKendry. Good to see you. First time I've met you. Good to see you. And Thank obviously you. got to be an exciting time for you guys to get a chance to host the Women's Soccer Championships this weekend. Krista. Yeah, you know, obviously we're excited. Our girls are excited. Hopefully we can play a good brand of soccer mm -hmm. and, and make the, the game as challenging as possible for Illinois State. What does this mean for you and your staff to try to put something together? I'm sure there's, besides just trying to get the team rolling, to a lot of stuff that goes involved to host something like this. Yeah, too. You know, obviously, luckily, luckily the administration does most of it, um, you know, but there are some things that we have to do and just trying to help keep them updated on the soccer knowledge, things that we can help them with. But it's a little bit more work, obviously, when you host it when you're on the road. However, you get to enjoy the comfort of being in your own environment. So it's definitely worth it. And sleeping in your own bed, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, Coach, let's talk about the team a little bit. You had a great start to the year, really, and then you lose Kayla Smith, and it's changed the team a little bit, at least from your goal scoring. Tell us what you've done to adjust there and, and what you're going to do different that we're going to see tonight that maybe helps you. Uh, steal one from Illinois State. Yeah, you know, obviously that was that was a big blow for us. Um, you know, we had very three dynamic attacking players, and then when you lose one of them, um, whether it's confidence, whether it's just momentum, all that stuff kind of halted for a little bit. We weren't playing bad. We just weren't creating 
enough good enough chances. Um, you know, we've tried subbing some, some players in who have been getting minutes um, and, and been playing okay, but still not dynamic enough. We adjusted um, the last game and threw our right back up top, who used to be a forward um, up until she came here. And then she was the one that has a little bit more speed and was able to get in behind a couple times and helped us. And she scored the goal against Missouri State that helped put it into overtime and allow us to be able to, to, to advance. So we're just going to try to put some pressure on them, honestly, and see if we can keep them contained in their own end as much as possible to not allow their attacking threats, um, you know, too many good looks in the box. All right. When you organize your team this week, is there something that you said special to them to motivate them for this game, or are they just ready to go anyway because it's such a big game? Yeah, no, I try not to do too much just because I know they're excited about being on their home field um, and all their families are involved. So I just try to keep them calm and understanding, hey, let's stick to our game plan and, you know, and try to make it as difficult for them to play. And, and when we get chances, we got to try to finish. Right. How do you try to control Drew's squad? Obviously a high-scoring team, a high-powered team. There are a lot of teams that have not found out the, the answer to that question. <laughs> So I'll let you know after the game. Okay. Works. Um, you know, obviously the biggest thing is just limiting their chances. That's the best thing you can do for them. What about you guys? Who do we got to watch for you tonight? Um, you know, hopefully anybody in our attacking front three, you know, we're going to look to try to get the ball behind them as much as possible early and see if we can kind of keep them on their heels. Um, you know, but definitely uh, Abby Springer is one of our forwards and Stephanie Thompson and Bronwyn Boswell are three of our people that have created uh, the most of our chances that we've had this far. Well, Krista, as I came here, it's the first time at my first time here at Black Beauty Field and seeing a lot of the championship dates, years of women's soccer. Obviously, you had a lot to do with it, and obviously you want to continue that great trend that you started as a player as a coach don't yeah you, you know I, I came in a very fortunate time the program had been on the rise and had been doing very well um, you know and was lucky to be able to be a part of the continuation of that and hopefully this team can, can keep the momentum growing for, for our program she's really humble isn't she <laughs> <laughs> well they got a great history here you can afford to be a little humble <laughs> well Krista Congratulations on the great season. Thank Good you. luck tonight. Appreciate it. That is Chris McKendry. She is the coach of Evansville. And a reminder that our coaches chat is brought to you by the St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. Stick around. More coming up right after this. You like to keep your family healthy and fit. And now there's a new way to do the same for your dog. Introducing new Purina Dog Chow Light and Healthy. It's a no-sacrifices, calorie-light way to keep him trim. With a deliciously tender and crunchy kibble blend he'll love. And 22% fewer calories than dog chow. Discover the lighter side of strong. New Purina Dog Chow Light and Healthy. Jeepers, it's the Creeper! <laughs> what do we do now? It's a mystery. I know. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. <gasps> Zoinks! It's Lucy, like our favorite State Farm agent lady. Hi, gang. I'll handle it. And that's not really a monster. <laughs> Mr. Carswell! You meddling kids. <laughs> State Farm takes the mystery out of dealing with insurance. Get to a groovier state. Our nationally ranked program sees more than 6,000 kids with heart problems each year. We treat them in St. Louis's only state-of-the-art suite that allows us to diagnose and operate in one place. And we have the region's top two pediatric heart surgeons. Each day, our heart team comes together to heal kids, one heart at a time. Having the best, another way our love for kids just keeps on growing. Help join a continent of nearly 3 million rugged square miles with a single broadband connection? When Emerson takes up the challenge, it's never been done before. Simply becomes, consider it solved. Emerson. Coventry Healthcare, an Aetna company, proudly presents the second half of the 2013 Missouri Valley Conference Women's Soccer Championship semi-final match as we welcome you back to Black Beauty Field here on the campus of University of Evansville here in southwestern Indiana along with legendary soccer coach Dave Durr, Scout Warman. Great to have you alongside as you see 2-0 Indiana State leads Drake the second seed versus the sixth seed and 
Let's take a look at some of the highlights of the first half. And, Dave, first of all, it was all Drake in the opening 10 minutes of this match. Well, really a great start from Drake, and I think you had to credit him coming out and really trying to play good soccer. Fantastic save there from Brit- Brittany San Roman. And then another good cross here from Paige Dusek, who was very dangerous early on, getting a lot of space behind. But you saw the tide try to start to turn about 15 minutes into the game, and then you saw the players with quality really step up. As as right right there, Reed gets the cross in, and and her sister gets the fortunate rebound, and all of a sudden, Taylor Reed puts it in the back of the net, and that really opened the game up. And then it was all Indiana State. Quick turnover, nice job from Kate Johnson finding. Tamarita in the behind. She slots it in the far post, and just a nice job there. Those goals, Dave, just 63 seconds apart to give Indiana State the lead at 2-0. As we take a look at the first half stats, a production of the Hilton Garden Inn in Evansville, the preferred hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference in Evansville. You can call them at 812-476-4000 or visit dunhospitality.com to book your hotel rooms on your next trip to Evansville. Yeah, you can see right here, Indiana State really taking control of the stock chart. A lot of that coming from Abby Reed getting wide and in behind on the defense. Drake having some shots, though, and really keeping the game close. And you got to credit them. At the end of the game, they could have made it 2-1 at the end exactly. of the half, and, and we could have a different half. So you got to look for them coming out with a lot of pressure early on. That's exactly what I was just going to bring up is the fact that, boy, almost a missed opportunity there for Drake to cut that deficit in half, but they missed that opportunity. We'll see what kind of momentum each team comes and carries over into the second half of play. A reminder, our next match here on NBC Live in the second semifinal here from Black Beauty Field, the hosts, the fifth seed Evansville Purple Aces, will take on the regular season undefeated champions, the top seed Drew Roth's Illinois State Redbirds, as we talked to both of those head coaches here at the half, and it should be quite a matchup. And Evansville, no doubt about it, will have their work cut out for them because Drew Roth has an exceptional team. Well, Illinois State stacked this year. I think it's definitely a team that you've got to find a way to shut down all those horses. As we see Indiana State and Drake both getting set for the second half, brought to you by Coventry Healthcare, Aetna Company. Good look at Paige Dusek. She had a good first half to start. Really was dangerous early on. And then they started to shut her down. She got a lot more quiet as the half wore on. She's going to need to have a good second half for Drake to get back into this. As you see, Kate Johnson and Emily Chura will get us started for this second half. And winner of this one will move on to the championship match here in Evansville on Sunday afternoon see Drake starting out with high pressure bringing their lines very high and nice job right off the bat of breaking that down that was Matty Orff on the carry and here comes Drake on the counter attack Rodas now Armstrong with the crossover now gets it to Pritchard Pritchard Drops it back to Armstrong and a nice back check there by Indiana State. And now Vaught for the Sycamores. Natalie Vaught, Jr. from Kentucky. And now Rebecca Rogers comes away with it for Drake. It's a little bit the way the first half started. Drake coming with very high pressure. Indiana State trying to play the feet of Kate Johnson. They're going to have to Remember that and spread the ball a little bit. Find the wings and get in behind and take away a little bit of that pressure from Drake. Bulldogs with it right now and a little too far ahead. And here is Rodas for the Sycamores on the carry. Alexandra into Drake territory. Didn't get enough mustard onto that one, but Drake will come back on the attack. Pritchard, number eight. Now they'll swing it out to the outside. That's Dusick. She's very dangerous to Stokes. Back to Dusick. Dusick will have to go back and settle it down. Dusick. Get enough on that, and we get the clear by Indiana State. Pritchard right there. 
And the Sycamores will handle it. Here comes Indiana State trying to get to the outside. There's Drake. And back and forth we go, and we'll get a throw in here for Indiana State in the opening two and a half minutes you of our second half. You can see how high Drake wants to come, Scott, and I think it's very important if you're in Indiana State that you stretch them out. That's what happened in that last 20 minutes of the first half. They were able to get in behind. If you just keep playing in front of them, they get higher and tighter and higher and tighter, and it just makes it difficult to play out. Vaught, nice touch pass ahead. Johnson. Johnson can't beat her defender, and we'll drop it back to Vaught. Vaught. Now coming in is Matty Orff. 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 Left foot up ahead. Reed shot, and it's now 3 0 Indiana State. Beautiful play there. Nope. They're going to wipe it off, and they're going to say offsides again. I think it's about the third time Abby has been called for offsides. That was really close, Dave. Um, wow. I told you earlier, good forwards cut the line, and it looked like she was a little offsides here. Very close call, but she's Man. definitely in behind the defender. Good call from the linesman. And just a little unfortunate there, and a nice touch pass, too, there from Orff. Well, Drake catches a break there, no doubt about it. But they get down 3 nothing. Boy, oh, boy, that's a huge, huge hill to climb. Really good start, though, for Maddie Orff in this half. Scott, she's come forward two or three times, kind of broke that first line of defense, and now they're scrambling to recover. Good two or three good passes there in the last sequence for Maddie Orff. And Johnson's not going to be able to save it, so we'll get Drake on the possession here as we get a shot of the Indiana State bench area as the night sky is beginning to take over here in Evansville. And we've got some very cool temperatures in this early November Friday afternoon. Now Sycamores again. This is Johnson towing the line, and she can't handle that, and Drake will get it back here. And you can see a little bit of the frustration on the face of Kate Johnson, the sophomore from Valparaiso, Indiana. Drive by the Bulldogs a little too far. Now Indiana State with a little bit of a mishandle there by Shelby Troyer. And that goes out of bounds, but Shelby will get it right back as you see there. Drake really struggling up to this point, trying to maintain a considerable amount of possession to put some pressure on Indiana State. And there was another missed opportunity there, Dave. Yeah, you got to be impressed right now with the midfield of Indiana State, both Taylor Reed and Taylor Hancock just doing a nice job of kind of bottling up the middle, not allowing the, that early pressure to, to bother them and just not allowing... Drake to get any kind of a rhythm. Abby Reed there again with an opportunity. This time she stays on side. However, Drake gets the possession back. It's funny, but when you have kind of those fast players, they always want to cut the line so close. Mm -hmm. And when you're that fast, you can give yourself an extra five yards. Trying and to still be on side. Trying to do that cheating job, aren't yeah. they? Armstrong on the cross and a nice job by the freshman goalkeeper, Brittany San Roman, who is very, seems at least from what we've seen today, very poised for a young freshman. Well, one of the things you look for in a keeper is composure, and her composure tonight has been fantastic. She doesn't look rattled or nerved. You know, even if every decision isn't perfect, she's just been very calm and made sure she's in good positions for the ball. That's a, that's a great sign for the future for Indiana State. Stokes will put some pressure on her. And Ashley's been very quiet for the Drake Bulldogs. One of their more prolific goal scorers that they have not on this team, but prolific goal scorers all time in Drake women's soccer history. And a whistle on Indiana State. So Drake will get the kick here. With just 38 minutes left in the second half, Sycamores lead it 2-0. Almost made it 3-0, but an offsides call on 
Abby Reed. And it nullified her 11th goal of the season. Here comes Drake on the attack. Dusick lost the handle. And here comes the Bulldogs right back to Dusick on the outside. Dusick to the middle. And now I'll get back to San Roman. Andy Orff doing a nice job of just standing up Dusick now, Dusick now and just finding ways to put pressure and not allowing her to get behind. So important with a player with her pace just to keep her in front of you. Bulldogs Rogers can't settle. Pritchard tries to get it, but she's whistled and we'll get an Indiana State kick here. See Indiana State just working the clock a little bit. Everybody aware and keep her taking a little extra time, taking a little extra time on the free kick. See the young ladies there jockeying for position. This is Orff's drive. And the 50-50 ball goes to Drake. And injured is Megan Fisher there. All-conference defender from Aikney, Iowa. She took a shot there going for that ball. She did, I think, because the referee already blew the whistle and they continued on. And she takes a good shot in the ribs here. Take a look as they're... Jockey in for a position. Referee just blows the whistle just before that. and No way that Abby Reed can stop there and just gets her in the ribs a little bit. And it looks like Megan's going to be okay. That's a good sign. Swanson with the kick. Trying to get it outside to Dusick, and that's going to be off Indiana State. Really seem to be working this near side, which would be the left side offensively for Indiana State, don't they, Dave? Well, they had some real success there early, and I think she has the pace to get behind Maddie Orff, but Maddie Orff has played a really smart second half so far and really laid into the first half and just kind of kept her in front of her, timed her, run, uh, timed her times to get into pressure and, and just kept everything in front of her where she's not able to get behind and even though they're forcing this side they're going to have to look for other options because they're not having much success there. Maddie Orff one of three Sycamores to make the all freshman team in the Missouri Valley Conference. Her along with Abby Reed and their goalkeeper Brittany San Roman. Now Stokes Pritchard trying to push it ahead and a nice clear by Indiana State. You see Drake really getting locked in on one side, mainly the left side, and and really they just need to switch the ball a little bit quicker. Start moving the ball and see if they can't open up in another direction. And a whistle as they try to get out the Vaught, and it's going to be Drake on the throw in here. As we cross the 35 minute mark left in this second half that drive a little long and Sound will Richard. let it go out a reminder today's date MVC history focuses on the title match of the 2009 MVC tournament at Morrison Stadium in Omaha Nebraska and on this date back in 09 Illinois State Jessica Carlson net her 11th goal to snap a scoreless die in the 51st minute as Redbirds blink Creighton one to nothing to win the championship, and that is our MVC tournament date in history. Stokes on the attack for Drake. Stokes, left foot, goes just wide. I like that, though, Scott. Much better the build up there, and you can see they changed the field, come from the right, and got it centrally quickly, opened her up some more space for the left footed shot. Not really liking the start by Indiana State here. Even though they're doing a good job, I think they're getting a little too early into that defensive mm -hmm. shell. I think they've got to still continue to play the game they play at the end of the first half and get that third goal. 
it's tough to hang on for a whole half and just keep the 2 0. To make uh, coaches happy, you just like to see them attack, 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 <laughs> no matter what the lead is, well, right? Well, it's easy to say when you're on the outside. <laughs> the, the, the pressure of wanting to close it down, but you got to pick your times to when you really start to lock it down because there's a lot of time here. And, you know, you make one mistake in the back and all of a sudden it's 2 1, you got a different ball game. Another whistle on Indiana State, so we'll get a kick here on the Indiana State end by the Drake Bulldogs. And I got to tell Tyler you, De Haven. I can't tell you how many times that uh, you're asking your players to come out more, and the players do that naturally. You know, just start to get a little bit tighter and make sure that no one uh, gets in behind them. Well, can't get the handle for the Sycamores. Drake gets the triangle, and that is going to be Drake ball. Again, working that left side of the offense for the Bulldogs. Substitution for Drake, number three, Emma Winstead. We get a substitution for the Bulldogs right now as Emmy, Emma Winstead will check in for Lindsay Horner's Bulldogs. Winstead getting a great one-on-one -on -one chance just at the end of the first half. Mm -hmm. They need a little bit of spark here, does Drake, but as I said, I think Indiana State content to just sit back a little bit. Winstead with the cross, and Indiana State will clear out some of that pressure. Now let's see if the Sycamores can sustain an attack here. That's Trying to go ball. to the outside, and it's a break. Loose is Johnson. Johnson shot. 3 nothing Sycamores. What a good ball and a good choice. I can't tell you because there was a player offside. She almost played her and she turned around instead and found Johnson on the other side. And Johnson came from an onside position. Good no call from the linesman there. This is, is good field awareness right here. You take a look as she gets it down on the ground. She has a chance to play it there. She's a little late, so she holds it and allows the deeper run from Kate Johnson. Really a nice pass there from Abby Reed and fantastic run off the ball. Well-deserved goal. goal Johnson, eight of not the much Andrea Swanson can do there. No, not at all, and a beautiful job, as you mentioned, by Kate Johnson, really kind of composed on that break. That was actually Emily Chura that wound up getting herself back on sides before the call was made. Well, if she doesn't play her, you know, that passive offside rule now, she would not be offside anyway, even though she's on the far end of the field unless she was in the play. And it looks like Drake couldn't get the save there, and so we'll get the kick here from Brittany San Roman with about 31 minutes left here in the second half of play. It's our first semifinal of the Missouri Valley Conference Women's Soccer Championships from Black Beauty Field here on the campus of University of Evansville. Indiana State puts two on the board in the first half, and now Kate Johnson has added another tally here in the second half to give the second seed a 3-0 lead. Armstrong with the cross, no blue shirts at home, and Indiana State will get the clear out. Now Schuling. To the outside. And a shot taken and a nice save by Brittany there. Well, that's a powerful left foot. I believe that was Dusick with the drive there by Drake. Yeah, good left foot and, Drake, and actually good buildup there from Drake. And one thing about Indiana State, they'll give up some chances. They scored 29 but gave up 27 this year. So defensively, they can be, you can get at them a little bit. And Drake just has to keep keep that positive uh, direction and keep going at him. Rodas. Getting the pressure from Armstrong and she really didn't have a play there at all, Dave. So no, just just intelligent maybe, play. Sometimes yeah. you'll try to force that pass out of the back instead of just allowing your team to organize. Now Rogers. Now to the middle, Shuling. And now Vaught has it for Indiana State. Vaught drives it up the field. Now here's Chura. 
Emily Chura up ahead. Onside is Johnson. Johnson with another break. Left-handed shot. Oh, Swanson just got her fingertips on it. Or it might have been 4 nothing, Dave. Yeah, great save there from Andrea Swanson. And the timing of all this is really being started by Abby Reed. She's coming across and starting to interchange positions. And some great runs from Kate Johnson come from deep position. I think that last goal, very important from Kate Johnson. She had been really scoring a lot of goals early and then it kind of uh, slowed down a little bit towards the end of the season. So that's going to continue to up her confidence level. And once goal scorers score, you know, they just keep going. Kayla Welch will get the corner. And the header and a goal for nothing. Indiana State as they're now pouring it on Drake. And it looks like the header goes in from Taylor Hancock. That's a great header from Taylor Hancock. Actually goes over a much bigger players to get this. Good service. Floodgates open a little bit. Good cross in there. And look at how she climbs over three bigger players. Just times it well. And a nice job. She's had a very good game. And so that's a well-deserved goal for her. Just like they drew that up and worked on that at practice, didn't they, big boy? <laughs> that makes a coach happy, right? Yeah. You got to feel like uh, Andrea Swanson there maybe needs to come for that one. But when you have all those defenders there around, someone's got to attack that ball from the defensive side for, for Drake. And you see the two goal scorers in the second half for Indiana State coming over to the bench of Erica True as... Kate Johnson got the third tally, and then that fourth tally by Taylor Hancock. And now as we near the 28-minute mark left in this second half, we'll see what Drake wants to try to come out with here. Down 4-0. Well, we don't want to hear after the game you don't see enough goals in NBC Championship <laughs> Soccer, do you? <laughs> no. Great offensive explosion here from Indiana State. They can score some goals. They got some dangerous players up front. And some dangerous players coming off the bench. They do. Well, you look at it. Kate Johnson, just a sophomore. Abby Reed, arguably the best player on the team. She's just a freshman. Taylor Hancock and Taylor Reed are both the seniors on the team. But you have two other all-freshman team uh, in Maddie Orff. And Brittany San Roman. I mean, this is a team that's loaded with a terrific group of underclassmen, Dave. Yeah, they got to feel really good about the future. And it's great that you you know you have some quality seniors that the mesh together really makes a nice balance. And Taylor Reed has really been solid in that middle, organizing and winning those second balls and supporting the front runners. But her little sister, she could fly out there. And she's that little bit of speed has put a lot of pressure on the Drake defense. Well, think about it. You have a, a couple of offsides calls. And you technically could have a five, maybe even a six-nothing score here. You saw that ball there, though. And you just, even though she lost it, you saw her run off the ball. And what she does really well, and we talked about it earlier, she starts making that run way before the play. She sees the game really well. Makes hard runs off the ball, and that's very difficult to defend, especially a player with pace. And as you see, Emma Wanstad there, she's trying to get it ahead to Armstrong. It really looks like they switched up sides between Armstrong and Dusick. Dusick kind of working the far side here over the last couple of minutes, where she was predominantly on that left side on the wing for Lindsay Horner's Drake Bulldogs. Well, they were really forcing that left side just trying to cram it down their throats weren't having any success any success on Maddie Orff so I think they've switched and see if they can't get at Molly McGee a little bit you, you got to credit Drake that they still have that fight and energy in there they're really battling for every ball but their backs are up against the wall now there's Armstrong there now trying to patrol the right side and we'll give it to Drake here and Dusick will not throw it in Page, a senior from Illinois, as we mentioned, leads the team goal assists and a points as we get a substitution in for the Drake Bulldogs. Back to Paige Dusek for a minute. She's ninth all-time in goals and has the fifth most shots in school history in a season. 
And I think that the, maybe the difference for me in this game is she has that similar qualities that you see in, in Abby Reed, but off the ball, you're not finding her as much really penetrating the defense. She's playing more as an outright winger, finding the ball wide and trying to get crosses in instead of trying to split those backs and get into goal herself. And there you get a shot at Denise Dantzler as she checks in for the first time in this afternoon's match. Dantzler, just a freshman from Omaha, Nebraska. A semifinal match is being carried on Valley Live, the Missouri Valley Conference's video streaming platform. For more information and the upcoming and programming San schedule Roman. for Valley Live, log on to Valley to Indiana Five. State. Now Don Drake TV. trying to get the attack. And a good aggressive play by Rodas to clear it out. Now Abby Reed trying to give chase. Overruns it, gets it back. Nice drop pass. And a drive is blocked up in front. Good and timing. here comes the Drake Holder. Good timing that five. time from Abby Reed. Reed. She just held her run that time after being offsides those other times. <laughs> Here's Kayla Armstrong. Schuling shot. I checked that Pritchard shot is blocked. Eight, and now Indiana Pritchard. State will get the possession. Caldwell. Now up ahead. Giving chase. Look at Swanson's way out of the net. And Drake will get the clear. And it looks like we have an Indiana State player that is down on the ground. And that's Abby Reed, too. That would be huge. She broke in on the outside again. Swanson coming out a little bit late. Getting a piece of the ball, though, doing a good job of not using her hands and just finding a way to block it. RD with a beautiful move there. Keep it in bounds. Bounce off the attempted tackle by Drake. Actually, I thought that was Abby Reed, but I think it's Emily Char sure, that came yeah. in late. Sycamores get it up ahead, and Caldwell is going to be whistled Offside, for the Indiana offsides. The Haven with the kick for Drake. And Vaught back the other way for Indiana State. Vaught, long pass. Reed catches up to it. Shot right on. Swanson with the save. Another good example of the timing, though, from Abby Reed as she just came in and split the defenders. And she just does a good job, really, of moving off the ball on the weak side. And very tough to stick with her. Tell you what, how many long passes have we seen from the midfield of Indiana State and their forwards, wings, whoever, catching up to those long passes to try to maintain some pressure on the Drake defense? Well, a little, a little bit of it is you got to look at a team and they're playing that ball. The player that's receiving it is on the run full speed. It'd be like if I told you he's going to be faster. You come from a standing position and I come from a running yeah, position. 16, so Shelby they're doing Troyer. a great job of anticipating. They're well coached and so they're making those hard runs off the ball before the play ever happens. And, and timing will beat the defender that, that way every time. There's Richard no was down on one Drake. knee, number eight, number the sophomore from Kansas back. for Drake, but Yellow back up on her own two State, feet, good to five, see. Emily and we'll Chura. get a kick here from Kylie DeHaven. She's a sophomore also from the state of Kansas and leading the Drake Bulldogs in assists in this 2013 campaign. And DeHaven will get it back. And Indiana State will get the goalie kick here, as you see in the top half of your screen. Just over 21 minutes left in this second half of play. And if Indiana State holds on, they will go to the championship game coming up this Sunday from Black Beauty Field to play the winner of our second semifinal matchup, which will kick off just after 6 o'clock here in Evansville as the host Purple Aces, the fifth seed, 
will take on the regular season champion, Illinois State Redbirds. Stokes. Drake really trying to pump that ball into the yeah. middle of the park, but I don't know how much success you're going to have against Troyer and Rodas. They've been handling everything thrown at them up the middle. And Troyer, Troyer, an All Valley defender this season. And somehow Dusick keeps that ball rolling. Nice ball by Dusick. Dusick working the middle like Dave was just talking about. And didn't put enough mustard on that pass. And here comes Indiana State back the other way. Well, the funny thing about the game is that the more you just force the ball up the middle, the other team condenses. You've got to find a way to spread the line. So they've got to find some more width in their game. Try to spread that defense out. And maybe be a tiny bit more patient. I know it's 4-0, but you're not going to have much success just pumping the ball up the middle against this Indiana State team. You've got to just widen the field a little bit. And the whistle will be on Drake. It looks like Mariah Bonchek there picks up the whistle for Drake. Indiana State in control of this one, up four nothing. Two goals in the first half, and they picked up two more here in the second half. Hence, the four goal lead. Now Rogers swings it outside to Dusick. 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 And a nice defensive play where she couldn't get the cross. And now the loose ball picked up by the Drake Bulldogs. That was Rebecca Rogers. Now to Haven. The Haven has it. Outside. Stokes. Stokes. That shot blocked. And again, just like Dave alluded to, great work by the defense by Indiana State. This is Vaught. Vaught drills it to the middle. Caldwell. Now Chura swings it outside, catching up to it again. Here's Vaught. Vaught with the cross and headed out by Drake. And now Indiana State's Vaught has it once again. This is excellent work here from Indiana State. Just keep in possession, working the ball patiently. Finding the breaks, and they are a team that's spread in the field a little bit. That you see that they kind of work the ball up the middle and then find the width quickly. As you see, Andrea Swanson had 95 saves this year coming into this afternoon's semifinal contest against Indiana State. And again, remember, these two teams just saw each other last week, a week ago Thursday, Halloween, and it went to double overtime before the Sycamores would come away with the victory in two OTs and their first victory ever in Des Moines against the Drake Bulldogs and wrapping up that number two seed with the victory but it's been all Indiana State here in the rematch eight days later as they lead it by a score of four nothing. You really felt like that helped Drake start as they had a good game plan looked ready to go just couldn't sustain it really and as Indiana State settled in they just really started to open the game up this is Caldwell Bria and they're going to say that'll be Drake as Bria just had no room to work there and so Drake will get the throw in from DeHaven. Bulldogs, this is Rebecca Rogers. Fantastic freshman for the Bulldogs. Gets it back. Rogers working that middle part of the field, trying to get over to Stokes. And there's that vaunted defense again by Indiana State. 
And that was her chance really to find Paige Dusek on the outside. It got the partial switch from Rogers and once again the ball just being forced up the middle. Drake will have to tap it back to Swanson and Andrea will try to swing it to the outside. Losing keeps the pressure on and back to DeHaven. Caldwell can't keep control and here comes Drake on the attack down 4 nil. 15 minutes left in this second half of play. Right back to Indiana State. Sycamores trying to catch Bria on the cut to the goal and Drake with a nice defensive play there. Now you're getting at that time in the game where if you're Indiana State a little bit time to keep Missouri moving Valley the ball Conference. now and start Pepsi switching the field and, and making Pepsi Drake Max. chase a little Zero bit. Elena Litch now coming in to the goalkeeper position for Drake. And a reminder, Valley fans, catch the title match of the Missouri Valley Conference Women's Soccer Championship uh, this Sunday, November 10th. With the winner receiving the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Please note, this match will not be seen on Valley Live. Coverage begins at 1 o'clock Central on Fox Sports Midwest, Fox Sports Indiana, Fox Sports Kansas City, Fox College Sports, and ESPN3. The match also will be seen on tape delay on Comcast Sportsnet Chicago at 4.30 Central Time. Please check your local listings. Our partner Dave Durr along with Sean Wheelock will bring you the championship game as the Indiana State Sycamores are just under 14 minutes away from making it to that title game. They'll play the winner of our second semifinal matchup that we'll have on Valley Live, and that will start at 6 o'clock as the top seed, the Illinois State Redbirds, will take on the host, the fifth seed, Evansville Purple Aces. Well, you know Illinois State is watching this game, and I think if they've got to feel like Indiana State putting on a pretty good show here. Coach Drew, Drew Rolf always prepared. Of course, he's got a game to take care of before you get to that point. Mm -hmm. But a team who has just some incredible talent. And as we talked to Drew during the half, uh, Rachel Tejado may be one of the most decorated women's soccer players, maybe in the history of Missouri Valley women's soccer. She is just having an incredible career, another incredible season. And she still is only a junior. One more year to go for Rachel in Bloomington Normal. Here come the Sycamores on the attack again. Offside, and another offsides <laughs> call. This time it's going to be on Sydney Losey. Well, that was close there. I thought that referee just a little bit behind the play. <laughs> She's laughing about it too. <laughs> Sycamores get the saddle. Sycamores. Second seed. And Indiana State will get it back off the misplay there by Stokes. And you get a good look there of just getting locked in on the same side. You have two or three passes on one side of the field, and there's going to be a lot of defenders over there. So you, they've got to find a way just to switch out of that pressure, and come away from the pressure, and start to change the field. Well, Erica True, as we talked about, transforming this Indiana State women's soccer program. Already finishing for the first time ever a winning season during the regular season. And are just a little over 11 minutes away from picking up victory number 10 in this 2013 campaign. There's the cross. Caldwell settles. And off the double team, she comes away with it, almost chipped it over the goaltender. Number one, Kalena Litch. Good save from Kalena Litch, though she hadn't had a touch yet. So she did a nice job of just standing her up and putting herself in good position. Caldwell, just pure strength here. Push and tackle, and nice touch there from Litch. I think determination you could probably throw into the equation there, too, Dave. 
Taylor Reed. Everybody wants to get in on the scoring. Taylor Reed on the corner here for the Sycamores. Headed out by Indiana State. Taylor trying to catch up to it. And this will be handled by Litch, who just comes into the game just a few minutes ago for Andrea Swanson. Shot for Indiana State. Number 16, Shelby Troyer. Drake on the attack, on sides. Drake with the shot right on as San Roman is tested for one of the very few times all afternoon long. That was Alex Freeman with the opportunity there for the Drake Bulldogs. Very shot tough on a keeper. You haven't Alex seen Freeman. a shot for 25 minutes to be <laughs> alert and stay sharp. She's been impressive tonight, San Roman, even though it hasn't been the hardest of evenings. She's been very sharp. There's Freeman again, lost the handle. Here comes Indiana State back the other way. Under 10 minutes left. Sycamores lead at 4 0. And Stokes will take it away for the Drake Bulldogs. And here come the Sycamores off the DeHaven intercepted pass. Now to Caldwell. Caldwell. And a lot of contact there, but no whistle. Now DeHaven will let it go out, and it'll be Drake Ball. A brief call was so strong, it's hard to tell who's tackling who there and who's who's playing defense. <laughs> I know. Well, very impressive by Erica True's Indiana State Sycamores after fighting off that first 10 minutes of the game where it was all Drake and. From there on out, it has been all Indiana State. Today. Yeah, you got to be impressed by their composure. Never got rattled, even though they were under the gun a lot there in the first 10 to 15. Really amazing how strong Drake came out and how they just weathered the storm and continued to improve and finally take control of the game. That was Aubrey Musselman, number seven there, you see, checking in for the first time in this afternoon's contest. <laughs> And they're going to give another corner to the Sycamores. And this time handling the corner will be Kayla Welch. And again, Kayla was the one that had the beautiful corner that set up the Hancock goal, a fourth of the afternoon for Indiana State. Drake trying to clear the pressure. Can't Welch again headed forward. Oh, and what a great save by Litch to not make it 5 0. Good reaction from Litch there. This is a difficult ball. He comes off her own defender. She's not expecting it and just catches her in a misdirection. Welch on the corner, headed and. There's Litch to handle it for the Drake Bulldogs. He's done a nice job since coming into the game. Been very confident. Come out strong for balls. And Indiana State will drill this one all the way down as we're under seven minutes left. In this first semifinal matchup, Taylor Reed scores first to make it 1 0 Indiana State. Then her sister, 63 seconds later in the first half, makes it 2 0. And then two more goals for Indiana State in this second half. And Drake with an opportunity there and just goes wide. Well, let's take a look at the goal summary, which is brought to you by Casey's General Store. Here's the first goal of the second half, Dave. And a great run in here by Kate Johnson. Just timed her on perfectly or she would have been off sides. And the corner kick. Take a look here as she just gets up over everybody. Taylor Hancock with a nice header. 
Now Rogers on the carry. Rogers. And couldn't get past two defenders there in the white jerseys. Will take things over. This is Brittany Schuling. She's a senior for Drake. Nice play there by Indiana State. Trying to get it ahead to Caldwell. There's Bria there. Nice job getting it to the outside. And the shot taken. And loose ball still cleared out. Caldwell at the top drives it. Oh! Just hit the crossbar, and they're going to say no goal. How close was that, Dave? Uh, great work, oh. and they just stayed on top of it. But Litch coming up big. She made two big saves. They couldn't hang on to the cross. But the rebound. My goodness. That was oh so close from dropping right on the line and becoming the fifth goal of the afternoon for Indiana State. And how many close but no cigars have we seen <laughs> for Indiana State? This could be... A much more lopsided score than we have here at 4 0. Yeah, and you want to say the first half much closer, but it's been all Indiana State in the second half. Take a look at Litch here. A good cross. Gets to the back post. She gets bodied off a little bit. Can't quite get to it. She sticks with it. Great shot here as she tries to lift it over, but look at. Litch still working to get back and goal down four nothing. That is close. Very close to being over the line, but I think the referee got that one right as it kind of came off the underside of the crossbar and came just back over the, the line. Now Bulldogs trying to sustain some type of attack. And Indiana State there with the defensive play by Kate Johnson. Dogs can't get the cross, and it looks like we're going to have a corner here for Drake. Corner kick for Drake, number 16, Brittany Schuling. Brittany Schuling will handle the corner. I think this is only what only the second or third corner we've had in today's contest for the Drake Bulldogs. And it's been a long time since we've seen one from Drake. And that one will result in a goal kick now for Indiana State. I mean, you have to probably go back to the first half the last time. <laughs> I can't. To be honest, I can't remember. I really think it's that. the first half the last time we saw <laughs> Brittany Schuling with the corner for the Drake Bulldogs. That just tells you how Indiana State has really seven, manhandled Rodgers. the Bulldogs here in impressive fashion in this first semifinal, especially in the second half of play. Well, you sure jinxed her, I can tell you that. <laughs> Thanks. Put that right Blame out Blame it on me. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> It's so frustrating when you're a coach when you don't give your team a chance to put one of those in. Mm -hmm. But it happens. Indiana State now. Another attack. And they have been on the attack for the better part of this match. That's the whole game right there. And a shot taken. That one goes wide. And we'll get a goal kick here for the Drake Bulldogs as we touch on two minutes left in this second half. And Indiana State is on their way to the championship match here at Black Beauty Field in Evansville on Sunday. Again, they'll kick that one off at 1 o'clock Central Time. 1 o'clock Central Time. And, of course, Dave and Sean Wheelock will bring it to you. And, again, that game will not be on Valley Live, but check your local listings. The Fox Sports Regionals of Midwest Kansas City and Indiana, along with ESPN3 and Fox College Sports, will bring it to you live at 1 o'clock. Drake getting everybody forward here wanting to get a goal at least to get some satisfaction out of this game. Well, obviously Drake's last contest of this 2013 campaign. It's the first time they've been in the tournament since 2009. So a nice turnaround for Lindsey Horner's squad and hopefully better things to come even though you lose a, a terrific forward and Paige Dusak among others. Brittany Shulia also leaving the squad as two of the seniors that have led this team for the last four years. One minute remaining, one minute.
Caldwell, who's gotten a ton of minutes here in the second half. She's really been their super sub the whole season coming off the bench. He does a good job at what Kate Johnson does and really is an excellent compliment because they both hold the ball so well, allowing your team to get more time to get in the attack and support those balls forward. And McKee not wasting any time with just 22 seconds left. And trying to just kill the clock here as Indiana State's going to roll to the championship game. And as we'll get the countdown nine, here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And congratulations to Erica True and the second seed Indiana State Sycamores as they win their 10th game of this 2013 campaign and they shut out the Drake Bulldogs here this afternoon by a score of four to nothing to advance to the championship game on Sunday. Stick around, Dave and I'll be back to wrap up this semifinal matchup when we return on NBC Live. EXPLORESTLOUIS.COM In the insurance business, you think differently about a customer when you stand in the middle of his dreams. When she serves you breakfast every Saturday morning. When his son plays on the same team as your son. When you live down the street from your customers, you make sure they get covered right. And you make sure you're there when they need you. That's the way it's done around here. Grinnell Mutual, a policy of working together. To find a Grinnell Mutual agent near you, Go to GrinnellMutual.com. The 2013 Missouri Valley Conference Women's Soccer Championship is brought to you by Coventry Healthcare, the official presenting sponsor for Valley Live. Also by Casey's General Store, Casey's famous for pizza. And by Perina Dog Chow, help keep him strong, Dog Chow Strong. Dave Durr, Scott Warman back with you. Congratulations to the second seed, Indiana State Sycamores. They won it by a score of four to nothing. That young lady is our player of the game, which is brought to you by Coventry Healthcare and Annette Company. Visit CoventryHealthcare.com for more information. Well, Abby Reed had a fantastic match. I think a lot of the goals were created with her runs off the ball, starting them off. She wasn't in on all the finishing, but she wasn't on the finishing of of the goal of the game. As you can see here, she get, makes a good run inside. Look at her expose the defense, comes inside, creates the shot here to the far post, just slots it in the side netting. De very difficult as a goal. He's got to hug the near post, but that timing of her runs off the ball was the story of this whole match. And a lot of good players, Scott, for Indiana State, but she's the one that stood out the most. And that is our play of the match brought to you by Emerson Emerson, the global technology and engineering company. Emerson, consider itself. So, 
One piece of the finals puzzle of the Women's Soccer Championship is solved. It's Indiana State. Will they play this team? The Illinois State Redbirds undefeated in the Missouri Valley regular season as they will take on the host, the fifth seed Evansville Purple Aces. Our coverage will begin at 6.05. The kickoff at 6.12. It's Illinois State versus Evansville. For Dave Durr and our entire crew, I'm Scott Warman. Again, the final score, semifinal game number one. Congratulations to the Indiana State Sycamores as they knock off Drake 4-0. Semifinal game number two coming up in a half hour. We'll see you next on Valley Live.